When it comes to mainstream family sedans, the Nissan Altima has had it pretty rough here in the US. What started out as a genuinely good sporty alternative to family cars like the Toyota Camry and Hyundai Sonata, the Altima was facing an image problem right around the time where Nissan introduced this all new sixth generation back in 2019. That image problem, of course, has been stirred around by a Facebook group called Big Altima Energy. Currently, that group is at nearly 150,000 people, and it basically shows off pictures and memes and videos of Nissan Altima drivers doing some pretty naughty things out on the road. Now, what makes it sad is the fact that the Altima in this current generation has actually been a pretty good car. I first had a chance to drive it nearly five years ago, and for 2023, the Altima has been given a pretty significant refresh. You can see it has new styling on the front, tweaked styling on the rear, and a new interior that has a much larger infotainment system that should bring the Altima better into the tech world. Now, as you can see this week, Nissan has loaned me this rather attractively styled SR VC Turbo painted in this dark blue. And the big question I wanna answer, if you guys are looking for a mainstream family sedan that doesn't necessarily break the bank, that also has enough power and tech to keep you comfortable out on those long road trips, how does the refreshed 2023 Altima continue to stack up? Stay tuned to find out. So before we start talking about the revised exterior styling, let me go ahead and pop the hood and show you guys what's powering this thing. If you guys are looking for the most performance-oriented Altima, you're gonna wanna choose this model, which is the SR VC Turbo. Now the big controversy with this generation Altima is the fact that when Nissan introduced it, they killed off their iconic VQ V6 engine option. Instead, that was replaced by a rather impressive engine, at least on paper. This is the company's two liter turbocharged direct injection four cylinder with a variable compression ability and of course a, a, a turbocharger that can deliver up to 23.2 PSI of boost. That VC is what stands for VC turbo. And in this engine or in this vehicle, it produces up to 248 horsepower and 273 pound-feet of torque. That is when you run the vehicle out on premium gas. If you run it on regular, the power outputs drop to 236 horsepower and 267 pound-feet of torque. Nissan says the computer has the ability to uh, adjust the compression ratio from eight to one all the way up to 14 to one, depending on course on the vehicle loads and efficiency and whether you need more power or more gas mileage. And it all goes out through an Xtronic CVT transmission front wheel drive is only available on this two liter turbo. If you guys want all wheel drive, Nissan offers it for $1,500 on the base two five liter gas engine uh, without a turbocharger. That delivers either 188 horsepower in front wheel drive or 182 horsepower with all wheel drive. Now fuel economy is also pretty good, rated at 25 in the city, 34 on the highway. The Altima has about a 16 gallon gas tank. Uh, if you got, guys want better fuel efficiency, the base engine can get up to 39 MPG out on the highway. Nissan still doesn't offer uh, an Altima uh, as a hybrid, at least not for this generation. They did it at some point, but not anymore. Uh, and in terms of performance, Nissan doesn't quote a zero to 60 time. We've got our testing equipment. We, we can go ahead and see what we can do out in the real world. The Altima has a top speed of around 130 miles an hour. And as this car sits, it weighs in at just under 3,500 pounds. Now closing the hood, let's go ahead and talk about the exterior styling of the Nissan Altima. Now I have to admit, this is actually for me a really good looking car. I really like the way this vehicle looked when it first came out back in 2018. And I think Nissan has made it look even better for 2023, especially when you guys go for the SR trim. You can see the V-Motion grill has been enlarged over the years. On the SR trim, it kind of has like a dark a chrome finish to it along with the new Nissan logo. There's also a new orange or red painted uh, SR badge in the grill to show people that you've got the sportier Altima. And then now for 2023, all Altimas come standard with full LED headlights. You can see it also includes an LED low beam, LED daytime running light and turn signals. No fog lights, however, you can see there are some fake vents here, some functional vents in the grill. But overall, compared to the front end of the new Honda Accord, I, th I just think this looks a lot more aggressive uh, and Compared to the Camry, I think it doesn't look quite as overstyled as the current generation Camry. But moving around the side profile, you can see uh, the Altima is a mid-sized sedan. Nissan still continues to offer the Maxima, which the Maxima and Altima are pretty close in overall size. At 192.9 inches long, this is about the same length as a Camry, but it's about three inches shorter versus a Honda Accord. Its wheelbase is around 111 inches long. 
which again is smack in the middle of the midsize family sedan segment. Now, if you guys go for the SR trim, you'll be treated with these gorgeous 19 inch wheels. I love the style of the wheels with the machine two-tone black finish to it. It's riding on a 235 40 R19 tire. If you guys go for a base Altima, you'll actually get a 16 inch steely wheel with hubcaps wheel covers. You can also go up to a 17 and 18 and of course a 19 inch wheel. This Altima also has four wheel disc brakes. Uh, four-wheel independent suspension. And then overall from the rest of the profile, you can see it is a relatively handsome looking car, especially from this angle in the sun with this bright, with this dark blue color. You can see the SR includes black painted mirrors with integrated turn signals. Uh, you also have a standard sunroof, which the Altima does not offer a panel roof. The window trim you can see is blacked out with some chrome on the lower edge over there. And then just like other Nissan products, it kind of has that floating uh, roof design for the D pillar area. And then coming over to the rear of the vehicle, this is where Nissan didn't really make that many changes to the rear end styling of the Altima. Although I do wish that they had made one critical change and that's the taillights. You can see the taillights are an all incandescent design, incandescent brake lights, turn signals, reverse lights. I really wanted to see Nissan do an all LED design. Uh, you can see the badging, it got the new Nissan logo, the new SR logo, and then the back here says VC Turbo to show that you've got the turbo engine. And then you can see over here, uh, I believe all Altimas still continue to come with dual outlet exhaust tips with chrome tips, which definitely give it a sportier edge. The rear bumper also got a little bit more aggressive, but you can see some of these right here are just fake uh, accent pieces that are not actually functional uh, for a rear, uh, rear skirt design. You can see the trunk lid also has an integrated spoiler kind of built in, but you can also add in a dealer installed spoiler to give it a more aggressive look at the back. And then when you open up the trunk, the Altima continues to have a relatively big trunk at around 15 and a half cubic feet. This is on the SR and up trims. If you guys go for a lower trim, I think the trunk capacity is a little bit larger at 16 cubic feet. You can see uh, the seats do fold down in a 60-40 manner. There are hinges that cross your cargo. And then if you look underneath here, you can see there is a temporary spare tire with a jack and whatnot, so you don't have to deal with a fix-a-flat kit. So the exterior of the 2023 Altima definitely got an improvement, but let's go ahead and take a look at the interior. Now, the first thing I wanna show you guys, here's the key fob for the Altima. You can see it's the current older fob. Nissan does have a newer key fob on some of their newest models, but you can see it's still a nice looking key. It feels sturdy. It's not super huge. Uh, and it also includes things like remote start, lock, unlock, open up the trunk, panic. So I can't fault them. You can also access this vehicle through your smartphone if you guys have access to the Nissan Connect app. Now you can see there's a button on the door handle, push that button that locks the door. If you want to unlock it, you have to touch the button again. There is no sensor on the back of the door handle to automatically unlock the door for you when you touch it. Now looking at the seats, you can see the SR trim only comes with this black interior with the contrast orange and white stitching. Uh, with this kind of interesting orange pattern in the perforation. The seats are also heated uh, two ways in the front, uh, and you also have a heated steering wheel. And then you have an eight-way power driver's seat with two-way lumbar and a four-way power passenger seat. No memory seats and no ventilated seats. You can get that in some competitors. Nissan still doesn't offer it in the Altima, and that was an opportunity that they could have, so I'm surprised they missed that opportunity. You can see the door panel also has the same kind of contrast stitching. You have a soft touch injection molded plastic, this silver painted plastic door handle, some piano black trim, a padded armrest over here, some more storage and hard touch plastic. The window is only one touch up down on the driver. I'm surprised it's not for, it's not auto up down for any of the other windows. It should be included, especially at this price point. But once you get inside the Altima, you can see it has that typical sedan step-in height, which it's relatively easy to get in and out of, although it's still not an SUV. As I get in and shut the door, the door has a relatively solid sounding funk, so it kind of adds to that impression of quality. Now, when you want to start the vehicle up, the start stop button is right here by the shifter. Turn the vehicle on, you can see the first thing you're gonna notice right away is the massive 12.3 inch display. This and the Accord have the largest displays in the family sedan industry uh, segment, although I guess the Sonata also has it, or I think it's a 10.25 inch display. But you can see the display itself um, definitely is that tablet style where it's pushed out forward. It's really easy within easy reach. You can see it also includes wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. If you guys go for a base or Ultima trim, the S model, you'll have a five inch display that doesn't have Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. So step it up to at least the SV trim and you'll get the eight inch touchscreen with a wired connection, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. And you can see the steering wheel hasn't really changed. This is still the same uh, D spoke or, or flat bottom steering wheel with the contrast stitching. It's got a manual tilt and telescoping with a good amount of adjustability and range. I believe this is the only trim to get paddle shifters to control the CVT and create those fake ratios. The horn sounds really puny. Uh, so I'm surprised to hear that they put like a horn that belongs on a Nissan Versa in this vehicle. 
Uh, but you can see it's got the new Nissan logo. The instrument panel hasn't really changed. There's a seven inch helper screen here. Some other Nissans have an all digital display, which you can see isn't still on, or it's still not on the Altima. You can see there's also a padded stitched area here on the over the instrument panel hood. This is a soft touch injection molded plastic. Same thing here. This tries to look like a carbon fiber trim, but it's definitely fake. And then there's hard touch plastic here. The infotainment system, you can see, this is uh, the Nissan Connect software. You can see the Apple CarPlay looks good. It takes up the entire screen, which I like. You still have your shortcut buttons over here when you want to get back to the Nissan system. And this is where the system starts to show its age when you go into the Nissan system, because there's the embedded GPS, which it's fine. Uh, it's relatively quick and snappy, but there are times when I first started this vehicle up where it takes forever for it to load. It just takes forever for it to kind of gather its thoughts. It's like a slow computer, but once it's, it loads itself up, it does work relatively well, but there are times again where I feel that the software behind this could be much improved. Another area where it looks like it could use improvement is the backup camera. That is a really low resolution screen. It does include a full 360 camera with moving object detection, rear cross traffic braking, but come on Nissan, you have a better quality screen you needed to put better quality cameras in here to match uh, the screen here because that is a kind of a huge disappointment. But overall, the system definitely looks better. I just think that the Accord system might be even better, although you have to go for the top end touring trim to get the Android automotive in it. Now you can see vents are down here. You have dual zone climate control uh, with big knobs. You have a volume knob here. You have your heated seats, which are two level, your heated steering wheel, which is one level. And then the buttons and knobs, they feel relatively high quality, which is nice. There's a wireless phone charging pad here. This controls your CVT transmission. Um, it's pretty traditional, although I found it very easy to go accidentally into an L position. Uh, there's also a sport mode when you push the back of this it'll put it into from d to an s mode that's how you're going to get maximum acceleration your electronic parking brake is here cup holders more piano black trim nice padded center console area with a relatively nice size storage compartment you can see no charging over here instead you have a usb a and a usb c charging port over here uh, and then you can see over here the glove box open that up it's a pretty big bin style it's stamped but not lined with felt the seats are their zero gravity nasa inspired memory foam seats which they i used to think they were more comfortable but now i'm noticing that the bottom cushion doesn't offer enough um thigh support for me they also don't really hold you in place very nicely this is not a sportier seat for the sr trim don't think of this again as an ser for the price point i expected to see a uh, an auto dimming rear view mirror nissan does not offer a digital camera mirror you can get the auto dimming as a dealer assessor uh, you also have map lighting in here, although you can see it's not LED, LED. Standard sunroof cover. This also opens up and it tilts. Uh, woven material for the headliner, but overall the interior itself is lacking some nice upgraded tech features like a heads-up display or ventilated seats or memory seats, but the nine-speaker Bose stereo sounds pretty good and this new infotainment system is a huge upgrade and keeping the Altima's interior feeling a little bit more fresh. But let's go ahead and hop into the back seat of the Altima because this only comes as a sedan. The coupe has been long gone for a while, but you can see the Altima's back seat offers a little over 35 and a half inches of leg room. This is on the small end of the segment, but you can see the leather seats back here. They look pretty nice. The same contrasting stitching. As I get back here, you can see, even though on paper 35 inches isn't a lot, as I get back here and shut the door, for somebody my height at five foot seven, I can still get comfortable back here. I can cross my legs. Surprised to see there's a hump here, but you can get this with all wheel drive. So that's necessary for the drive shaft tunnel. You have rear seat air vents on the higher trim, USB charging ports, two of them. Uh, and then the materials back here, unfortunately are hard touch plastic. It is padded over here where you would rest your elbow. And then Nissan only gives you one storage cubby. There's no heated rear seats. And then you can see the head restraints. They don't have any adjustments, but you do have an armrest that folds down and gives you two cup holders. In terms of the headroom space, you can see at five foot seven, my head comes pretty close actually to the ceiling. So somebody over six feet may be hitting their head on the roof. But overall, if you want a bigger back seat, you can look at competitors like the Accord, for example. Um, but the Altima's back seat is still very usable for average size adults. So it's crazy to think that it's been nearly five years since I had a chance to drive the current generation Altima. Altima. Remember, this car came out back in 2018 as a 19 model. And since then, a lot of things have changed. I mean, obviously everyone keeps going toward SUVs, but this car, I've always thought it to be a good car. However, in recent years, it's been a good car ruined by a pretty bad reputation thanks to big Altima energy. Now. Setting off in this SR Turbo, the, uh, this is the only way that you can get the 2.0-liter turbo variable compression engine. And it's nice because Nissan still offers a turbo high output engine, which is something you cannot get in the new Accord. 
uh, and I've never actually had a chance to zero to 60 test this vehicle, but uh, with nearly 250 horsepower, 273 pound-feet of torque, only front-wheel drive, however, I expect it to be in the mid to low six second range. So let's go ahead and go down our usual stretch of road right here. We've got our testing equipment and let's see what we can get. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, leave all the nannies on because I'm wondering how it's gonna do, but we'll brake torque it. Spinning out the front tires. Wow, that's pretty impressive. Zero to 60 in 5.96 seconds. Now, I imagine if the front tires didn't spin a little bit, which I left the traction control on for a reason because I was trying to mitigate that, uh, I suspect this to be a little bit quicker. We'll try another test down the road and we'll see what we can do, but 5.9 is actually a pretty good number. Remember, this is something that you would probably expect out of the V6 Camry. I think I got like 5.8 or something in that car, or 6.3, depending on the trim level. The Accords, the Accord with the two liter turbo from the prior generation was the quickest, but uh, now the best engine you can get is the hybrid powertrain. But you know what, I just realized, I forgot to also put it in sport mode in the transmission. There's a little button here on the back, uh, and then it says S right there in the instrument panel. So let's go ahead and try this again on this stretch here. Now this is a little bit more uphill. We're not gonna brake torque it this time, I'm just gonna floor it. There's a little bit of lag. 6.1 seconds here. Remember, this is more slightly uphill. I noticed when you brake torque it, there is a little bit less lag, but uh, you know, you kind of deal with lag from the engine, and then you also have lag from the CVT. So the driving experience of this car isn't wonderful sounding or feeling, but it is effective. I mean, this is gonna put the Altima among the quickest in the segment, thanks to that two liter turbo. Now, most people aren't gonna get this powertrain. You're gonna just be stuck with the 2.5 base engine, which I suspect Nissan will eventually replace with that 1.5 liter three cylinder turbo. But you know, with this powertrain in the CVT, you put your foot down here, there's so much torque. The Altima is, is quick. I mean, there's a reason why there's those memes of big Altima energy, because this car gives, it's really easy to drive this car fast. It gets up to speed quickly. It feels also light on its feet. The steering, however, is very numb and devoid of feel, but it is quick and the suspension feels in between soft and stiff. Um, but I will say that the suspension feels a little unrefined. It doesn't feel like it has good control of body movement and uh, suspension shock rebound that I felt in like the new Accord or even a Camry, for example. This car feels like it's almost like a generation behind in terms of refinement, um, but it's not bad. If you haven't driven the competition and you get in this car, you you know, you pull up to an Enterprise or a Hertz, whatever, and they give you this as a rental. It's not a bad car to have as a rental. It's just a shame that uh, most people won't probably try it with the two liter turbo. Put my foot down here again. The CVT, it fakes shifts unless you're really flooring the car, then it tries to just hold the gears uh, or hold the revs up there to get you the maximum acceleration. Because when you fake the shifts on a CVT, it's gonna make the car slower. Uh, but again, enthusiasts prefer that because they just don't like the constant wail of a CVT. And this engine doesn't even, doesn't really sound all that pleasant either, but it's probably gonna sound better versus the base 2.5. But let's go ahead and try it right here and see what we can get on this stretch of road, which is nice and flat. We'll brake torque it. Definitely spins out the tires when you uh, brake torque it more. Holding the revs, but it feels quick here, 5.95 seconds, so that's, that sounds about right. This is definitely speedy, uh, especially for just a family sedan. Imagine if Nissan put all wheel drive on the turbo engine, like it would be nice. I mean, they offer that combination in the Infiniti QX55 and QX50. So I don't really understand why they don't want to offer it in the Altima, but the take rate on this engine is probably very low. Just driving it normally, you can see it's got a nice wave of torque. The uh, visibility in here is also pretty good. I can see out of the front, the side, the rear really went nicely. Nissan doesn't offer a digital camera, rear view mirror, but it's not really needed. You can see out of this car, out of the back re window really nicely. And in terms of quietness, we'll take it out of sport mode here. We'll just drive the car normally like I was renting this from the rental counter and uh, you can feel light on its feet, just not much in terms of feedback. It doesn't really encourage you to go faster. Although it's easy to drive this car fast. It just, it just doesn't feel like it enjoys hustling through the corners. It doesn't feel like a pseudo sports sedan. It feels like a comfortable family car. And the ride quality I will say is definitely in between firm and soft. It's not quite as soft as some competitors, but it's also not as firm as like a, you know, a Mazda 6, for example, which they don't even offer anymore. 
Uh, and the seats, I will say as well, this is their ne zero gravity NASA inspired memory foam seats. Uh, and I remember them being more comfortable. Perhaps I just felt more comfortable seats and they feel the bottom cushion feels like it's lacking in FIG support for me but try the seats out for yourself, see if you like them. Uh, the driver assistance in this car also is perfectly acceptable. Uh, this, this has the Nissan safety shield and the pro pilot assist and whatnot. So it has the ability to keep you centered in the lane, which I found it works just fine. Not as good as what I've tested in the newest Accord or the new Hyundai and Kia twins with their driver assistance tech, or even Toyota's new Safety Sense 3.0, I think is stepping up their game as well. But in terms of uh, fuel economy, my week's worth of testing this car was showing around 450 plus miles on a full tank, which is excellent. Uh, and in my week's worth of testing, I averaged just shy of 30 miles to the gallon, like 29 MPG, which is excellent considering how fast this car is. Um, again, you kind of have to drive the car a little bit more conservatively, but the CVT definitely helps you do that. And because this car is just not super sporty, I don't mind driving it at a you know 5 tenth pace because it just enjoys driving at this particular speed. So. Overall, the Altima, with its improved tech, handsome design, quick turbo engine, which most of you won't get, uh, you'll get the 2.5 base engine, which is probably gonna be about two seconds slower, zero to 60. It is a competent family sedan. And, you know, I grudgingly admit it's a good sedan. If you are, you know, choosing one of this at the rental counter, or you have a choice between this and several other vehicles, this is not a bad choice, especially with the upgrades Nissan has made. I'm surprised that they don't do a hybrid still. I'm surprised they don't offer all wheel drive on this two liter turbo. Um, and, and some of the tech features, like the screen's nice, but that looks old, the backup camera looks old, but overall, the Altima is definitely an interesting vehicle. It's no shocker to me that it continues to do decently well, although sales have kind of tanked over the years because everyone keeps, to go, keeps going to SUVs. But I think Nissan has done a good job here in keeping the Altima still relevant. Uh, I'll just be curious to see what they plan to do for the next generation. So after spending a week with the fully revised 2023 Nissan Altima, I have to admit, as much as this car gets a lot of hate on the internet for the Facebook group Big Altima Energy, after spending some time driving the latest version, it is still a very good family sedan. It's one of the few out there that continues to offer an uprated engine, a two liter turbo, because as you guys know, the Accord dropped that engine. And then we, of course, there are rumors that Hyundai and Kia will eventually stop offering the Sonata and the K5, although we did just see a revised Sonata introduced for 2024. Uh, the styling of this vehicle, I think is one of the more handsomely designed vehicles especially when you get it in the right trim. The interior, while it's still comfortable, it has now better tech with that 12.3 inch display, although the graphics and the software need to be upgraded as well. But as long as you use the wireless CarPlay or the wireless Android Auto, you'll kind of bypass the Nissan software. The back seat is on the smaller end. You will find more rear seat legroom and competitors like the Accord and in the Camry, for example, but the trunk, however, is still nicely sized. I do wish that Nissan would consider offering all wheel drive for the two liter turbo engine, but with most people ending up choosing the 2.5 base engine, it's not surprising to me since the take rate of this two liter turbo is probably going to be relatively low. Now, in terms of sales, the Altima used to be number three in terms of best seller. However, the sedan segment has really been falling over the years. Uh, last year, Nissan managed to sell just under 140,000 Altimas in the US. Now, apparently a third of those sales went to rental companies, which again, adds to the fire in terms of the reputation that this car has to deal with, because if you find them in the rental fleets, you're, they're gonna be driven around by drivers who simply just don't care because it's not their vehicle. But overall, if you want the Altima as a personal car, it's still a relatively good choice. And it's also one of the least expensive offerings in the segment. At a base price of $25,500, this undercuts the Camry and the Accord by a couple thousand dollars. And if you guys want to step it up to the higher trims, this model here starts at around $35,000 with the turbo engine. Now that is definitely a lot more expensive, 10 grand more expensive. Those of you who are looking to save some money, I recommend going with the SV trim for an extra $800 over the 25.5, uh, you'll basically get an eight inch touchscreen with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, uh, and you'll just get a, a better tech interface considering the fact that this vehicle here on the base end also has 16 inch steel wheels. You'll get alloys when you step up to the SV. Most of you who want all wheel drive uh, can also option that in for $1,500. That's an option you still cannot get in vehicles like the new Accord, for example, or the Sonata and K5. So that's something to consider. But overall at around 36 grand with destination, this is a couple thousand cheaper versus a fully loaded Camry or an Accord. However, though, the Altima or the Sonata and the K5, which I almost called it the Optima, uh, do 
price out their vehicles at the top end right around the same as the Altima, and they also will have pretty similar speed. Although in those Korean vehicles, you have to deal with a dual clutch transmission, which isn't necessarily the best transmission if you're stuck in traffic. The CVT, as much as I hated the transmission in terms of the sound, it is effective in putting the power down, and it's also relatively smooth when you drive the Altima at a slower pace. Well, with all that said, hope you guys have enjoyed my full overview on the 2023 Nissan Altima. If you're also looking to see the latest cars I'm testing, be sure to follow me on Instagram at redline underscore reviews, like us on Facebook, and as always, guys, please keep subscribing to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video.